Welcome, good people. Yo. Podcast number four. Four. Yep. I always forget <clears throat> the actual number. It's number four. Well, let's shout out to our sponsors right off the top. Off top. Because I always forget. Uh, Thedrumcoaches.com. For sure. You know what it is out here. Lifetime memberships. You pay once. You remember forever. Video lessons every Sunday. And then, of course, the app that I built with all the <laughs> play-alongs that I made. Drum Tracks app. Both of those links are in the description somewhere around the video if you're watching it on video. If not, type Listen, it in. Listen, I'm feeling pretty excited about the app because we have only been up since the third week of December. So that makes it about two months, two and a half, almost two and a half months. And we're already over 8,000 um, users on the app, man. We You're welcome. <laughs> Definitely want to push that to, to 10,000 coming pretty soon. So if you're watching this on YouTube, hit subscribe button. Man, hit the Facebook, subscribe button. Like. Everything that we're talking about, the Drum Coaches, the Drum Tracks app, the app is a free app. You can look in the description of uh, wherever you're watching this video, or if you're listening to the podcast, you can look in the, des the podcast description. You'll see a link to everything that we're talking about. So let's 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 get into it. What are we talking let's, about today? Smoke and mirrors, man. Smoke and smoke mirrors. mirrors, bro. What you mean? I was uh, <clears throat> I was posed with a question from one of the online students on what they should do. Like, should I move to Nashville? Uh -huh. uh, should I move to New York? Should I move to, to LA? LA? Should yeah. like to, to really pursue my music dreams? And of course my question was, well, what's, what's your music dreams? Right. Like, what do you, what do you want to do? Right. And this particular person, actually there was, uh, there was like two or three people that have asked me that and all of them are similar. They have different answers, but they're right. similar. So it was that whole, man, I just want to be on. I want to be able to play gigs. I want to travel the world. I want to tour. And I know you're going to make a lot of bank by playing for these artists and it's just going to be consistent. The gigs are going to be coming. They're going to be flowing in left and right. And as I heard all three of these answers, which they're all from three different people, I was like, eh, you know, yeah, uh, OK. They're like, wait, wait, wait. Do you know something I don't know? Is it? I said, well, you know, I mean, I hear what you're saying. I see what you're trying to do. And I respect it. But the whole, well, the gigs are going to always be there. The pay is going to be great. I'm going to be doing just music and be just fine. I was like, well, hang on. Listen, There's cost of living <laughs> in certain places because we live in California and we know L.A., L.A., Bay Area, all that. If you're, right. If in you're LA, in California, L yeah. Bay Area is horrible. If you're in SoCal, L.A., horrible. Unless you want to stay in the, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. In the hood hood. It's still not. It's, it's it's not good. It, and so when you say when, or when they when these three, I'm not going to name no names. I don't want to feel like I'm singling them out. But we had this conversation, so they cool with it. So it was that whole like, yo, the the pay is going to be so good that I'll be able to live on my own, have my own spot, and woo woo. Right, and I was right, just right. Like, right, right. They feel they feel like if they reached what they consider to be their dream, that they'd be stable. And it's a possibility. Um, there are some musicians who are. Uh, making really great money. Some. <laughs> right. That's where the smoke and mirrors come in. Okay. Some of these musicians are eating. Listen, they want to put thing. out a quick disclaimer. It's uh -oh. not that we're trying to discourage you <laughs> from attempting any of the things that you wanted, that you're dreaming about. Like, I feel like, especially if you're young, do it. Go for it. Try it out. Like, you're, you're, you're young enough to, to, to change course um, if you feel like it's not working out. But yeah, I guess you're just trying to unveil in this podcast some of uh, the reality of what the situation that is for a lot of people. Because we wanted to move to L.A. too. We we talked about it. Come on now. <laughs> some years ago, we was on that same boat. So it yeah. ain't like it's foreign to us. We understand uh, yeah, and we know the people, need and we the know, want for it. Listen, I know people who are playing on... Um, R&B gigs or pop gigs or whatever that are, I mean, maybe not A-list artists because um, there's only so many of those, right? There's not, everyone's not an A-list artist, but they're maybe playing, list, playing for artists that are maybe not in their prime, but still known artists with a lot of hits. Um, I know musicians who are really, 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 really good who are not on a pop gig, but they're maybe on rock gigs and they toured the world and uh, they've made okay, they made cool money. But there's, there's even for those people who are making cool money, there's still the reality of what it is. And what's uh, the best, the best uh, saying I've heard from a, a musician friend was like, being a musician sometimes is like going from temp job to temp job to temp job. 
It's like preach the word of God on today. <laughs> Call a text, Bishop. I'm, I'm, it's like it's it's one. Your whole career is one big temp job, and of course there are those who consistently work, but the ones who uh, consistently work, the majority of them tend to have multiple gig sources. It's not just one. It's not. It's not just oh, I play for this artist. It's I play for this artist, and when I'm home, I play at this church, and I also do production and studio work, and I also do. And so there's like a plethora of things. Some uh, people teach lessons. They teach lessons when they come home as well, or maybe even while they're on the road. Now we have the internet, so you see drummers all the time talking about Skype lessons, or when even the drummers that are doing clinics, when they fly around the world, they may be in a city or in a country for a week, but they're trying to get uh, lessons scheduled while they're there. If you were at Nam, you uh, even you and Eric did lessons while you oh, were yeah. at Nam. Uh, That's awesome. So I mean, it's 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 there's it's a multifaceted approach, which is the the most sustainable, I would say. Well, why didn't you move to LA then? <laughs> if it's the multifaceted, can't you be multifaceted down there? You you can now. When you when you're talking about, it all depends on what you're willing to. Uh, Man. To what you're willing to go through. Well, wait, wait. Before you answer that question, I'm going to say this. He said the disclaimer, not trying to discourage the people. I'm trying to show the people who may not know what they're getting themselves into. Right. And, the, and the end all result, honestly, I can skip to the end. It's a grind no matter what. And you got to be right. willing to put in the work and right. not see the instant results because it's not microwavable. No, nope. this is this is like Thanksgiving dinner. You're going to be there. You got to <laughs> let it marinate. There's people who do auditions over and over and over and don't get it. But then there's people who, one day they do after right. 30 auditions. And there so. are also the people who just don't get it and don't get on Man. to the type of gig that they want. I mean, at the end of the day, but there's so many ways. Right. So I think that if you want to be a full time musician uh, or a full time drummer, any instrument, you 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 can't lock yourself into one certain type of thing meaning success for you so if success for you only means playing for a pop gig with an a-list artist that's hot at that time it's going to be difficult for you to be happy because it's it's like the least likely that that's going to be the situation right away it may be the situation right away it may not be the situation for 10 years it may never be the situation man but um yeah, if, if I feel like if, if you in your mindset set music itself as the goal and being able to sustain, sustain, sustain let me learn how to talk today, huh? <laughs> <laughs> if you uh, can let sustain, sustain, <laughs> if you can let music sustain, sustain, sustain. right? Uh, what you're sustain you financially and you let the music be the goal, I feel like you have a higher chance of success and being happier um, because when it comes to, to trying to do it, it's like. We were talking about this the other day. It's like the NBA, right? Man. You have how many players in the in the league? Less than 400. And how many players get drafted every year? 60? So, if I think around yeah, 60, two round two rounds, 30 30 something teams, 60 something. How many how many players are seniors or just players period because people are going to the league after their freshman year in college? How many players are in D1 schools uh top contending college schools that are have players that are trying to get to the NBA. Countless number of players. Too many. And and so let's just say... Only, only 30 really make it. And like 10 become starters and five are like stars. Right. Not But not every year, right? Not every year. So let's, let's say... Let's say there's 60 spots in the draft, but there's 700 players trying to get... There's, it's just literally impossible that all of them are going to make it into the <laughs> NBA. You're not. It's literally... Not possible. Not but if basketball is just the, the goal, maybe they can go play overseas. Maybe they can go play in Canada. And I could be wrong on that number as far right. as we're just, we're just we're just but. we're just using it and even the seven hundred number that I threw out there, we're just using it as an example. If you have sixty spots and you have a hundred players everyone can't make it. Everyone can't make it. So <laughs> not not in this <laughs> What? It's so discouraging. Listen, you just you can't make it, bro. Just think no, of it. But this, no. all, all I'm saying is, I'm kidding. Go ahead. All, I'm not like I said. I'm not trying to discourage because you could be one of the ones who make it. It's just what it is. It's, it's just one of the ones out of all <laughs> so, six thousand of them. So yes, I would say do your best, work hard, shoot for exactly what you want, what you set in your mind, 
work really hard, know what it means and know how hard that work is going to be to get there. Know that it's not just about your drumming skills. It's not it's not just about being dope at your instrument. You do want to be dope at your instrument, but it's about networking. It's about a bunch of other things that are not a part of the drums that help you get to where you're trying to go. And so all, all of it, it it's 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 a grind like you said. Now let's go back to that uh uh, part A question. Why didn't you move to L.A., Doc? Well, there, for me, because of what my goals were, um, I used to uh, want to play for an artist or thought that was the idea of success. But as I continue to uh, become more self-aware, especially due to experiences that I had uh, playing gigs, I realized that um, for me, for me personally, playing for another artist was not necessarily what I wanted to do long for the long run, what I really wanted out of music. And so it just, it didn't make sense because for what I wanted to do, I didn't have to move to LA to do that. We have this thing what called about Nashville, New I, York city. Well, not for what I, not for what I wanted to do. Now these may be places that I go visit. These may be places that I travel to, but I don't have to live there because we have this beautiful thing called the internet now. Yeah. So because we have the internet now, I mean, there are, there are, there are, Remember when the whole, uh, what was it, the uh, live arrangements things were happening? Man. And Whew. there were there were, there were were these kids from Berkeley. Killing. Killing. Putting together these dope live arrangements. And before they even moved to L.A., they already had made connections. Because people saw the because video. Because people had saw the video and saw their talent. And they, had, they were able to uh, showcase their ability and what they were. And, and they were smart because they showcased it in the way that they actually wanted to use it in real life. They were doing live arrangements of pop songs for artists. Now these guys are doing arrangements for these artists. These guys are performing on tour with these artists. These guys have made a career for themselves, right? We did a live arrangement. They recognized us when we went down there. Yeah. No, I mean, just... that, that, we did. Yeah. But that's that was back then. At the <laughs> <laughs> We didn't know any better, man. At, no, there's nothing wrong with doing it. But at the end of the day. So so strive for it. You may. Yeah. You, I mean, the goal you, may change. The goal may change, man. But you at the end of the day. Uh, the, that's the reason why I didn't move down to L.A. L.A. is expensive. It is cheaper to travel back and forth uh, for me than to live there. Because, yeah, that's it's crazy expensive. But I can still travel back and forth, do the networking via online. Like, Instagram and the DM is amazing. Well, well but what about what about the people um, who are in a place where <clears throat> the music scene isn't really there at all and they don't have anything? Like, they may have Instagram and Facebook and YouTube, but they don't have a band that they play in or they don't have a gig because where they're at is just – it just doesn't happen. Again, They're in the middle of Idaho. Again. Shout out to Idaho. I'm not talking <laughs> about you. I'm just, I just do a state out there. Again, we have the internet. So if there's no one in their hometown that they can collaborate with, because of the internet, you can find people to collaborate with. And everybody's looking for people to collaborate with. I can go on IG right now, see a video of a drummer playing a groove, and pull out my keyboard and create a song to it or a loop to it or anything and then post it and tag that person in it. I can do that with other people. Next thing you know, I'm meeting people. People are, oh man, you did this. Oh, that was dope. Oh man, thanks for, you know, whatever. They feel gratitude for you wanting to use their video to, to create. And now you're collaborating with people and now you're meeting people and talking to people. And if you decided to move somewhere, you can move somewhere where you know people. You can move somewhere where you've already established some type of uh, base of friends or a group of people that you, or some type of network. So you're telling these people they got to actually post. Well, what I'm saying is, is you don't have to. You can use the Internet for all that. <laughs> you you got to post on there. Yes. You can post on there. You talk to people. You communicate. You so put before yourself- you move, make your connections on the Internet. I'm I'm saying it's it's smart. It's like people who go to Nam and don't know anybody and think they're gonna have like deep connections with people in the two days or three days that they're there. Like you have to people who meet up at Nam they have known each other before or they know each other from Instagram or they know each other from Facebook or oh you but like Instagram I think is dope because it's really a personal place like i can comment on your post i can hit you in a dm you can respond back i can res- reply to your stories i get to know who you are because i can see what you're doing during- there's a whole lot of hey yo it's, <laughs> the funny thing for me is how you know ne- i in my experience we didn't talk about this on the last podcast but going to nam from people that recognize me from instagram and i recognize them we follow each other right or whatever 
it's funny how I've never met you in person, but when we see each other in person, it's like you know him. It's like we fam. Right, they, right. They come up to me, bro, <laughs> bro. What's <laughs> yeah, hey, exactly. man, what, what you, hey, exactly. buddy, man. How, exactly. how fam? How everybody? I'm like, bro. Do you know I have a family? Hey, hey oh, okay. You don't? Well, I do because well, obviously I'm here. I have a parents. I have a brother. <laughs> I have a sister, you know what I mean? Like, I have family. Yeah. But it's that whole conversation of just like, yo, man. Oh and they, my goodness. Exactly. And they feel like, no, we we're brothers. Like we friends. We right. cousins. We fam. You know right. what I mean? Like, like man, nah, hey, bro. You, oh man, I've been following him since like 2000. That, that's that's the homie right there. Right. That's, that's my. That's my. Is it is it your homie? How long you how long have you Listen, known bro, him? I've never seen you in real life, <laughs> but this is the but because of the internet. So that's what I'm saying. What I'm saying is. Uh, we Brodies now. Listen, I, I listen. I have friends that have moved to LA from Sacramento. Some of them play gigs. Um, if I told you their living situation in real life, you'd be like, "What?" Because it's not what you think it is. Even though when you if you went to their Instagram page, you would see that they post pictures of themselves on stage when they're on the road in theaters and stadiums and things of that nature. And not just them. Other people who are on, they only want to post. Them but, at, but, at the at the big gigs or whatever. But, but when they go home, well, I listen, wasn't gonna put their business on the street no, like I'm that. No, I'm not. Just, it's not just them though. It's it's a lot of people. When they go back, when they land back in L.A., it's rough. I know people who couch surfing, um, and hoping for the next gig to come. I know people who are uh, With and, eighteen roommates. Listen. For sure. Yeah, in a one bedroom for sure apartment for playing. sure, and they're all musicians, so they're all like, "Hey, look." It costs too much to live here. Let's all come together because we all in this grind. And there's nothing wrong with that. You just have to know that that's that's we're just we're not trying to discourage you from doing it. We're just trying to shed light on some of what the reality is. It is a grind. You gotta. I know musicians uh, who are playing for artists right now that are, you know, major artists considered major artists. Maybe not on the A level, but they're probably like at B level. They're not super low. They're still doing uh, big gigs, and they live up here. Mm-hmm. In Northern California, they just drive down to L.A. for rehearsals. And he, this person, he didn't even live in L.A. to get the gig. He just had friends in L.A. He just had friends who were connected. And so that networking aspect worked. So he got a call, and he just went to L.A. for rehearsals, flew out, did his gigs. And when he lands, he comes back home to Northern California. And then, you know, and he has that gig. And, but that's the other thing. You can land a big gig that may pay well. But what you have to understand is you are for hire and it is a temp job. When that gig is over, when that gig stops, when that artist is not on the road, you are not getting paid. Unless you are a retainer and from the people that I know who are out playing a lot, they are not on retainer. I know a musician who he lives with his parents just to save money. Wow. Because that thing happened where he played for an artist touring the world. Yep. And then what happened was... You, you're gonna check it in the middle of the session. Just walk you, off camera. For you're the, gonna run. Out of here. Just had to check something real quick. Go ahead. He got off camp for those who are. Li- he got off the couch <laughs> to go check to make sure it was still recording because your Apple software is trash. Listen, and it keeps shutting down. Anyway, move right along because we ain't got time you. for all that. I'm not even here. We ain't, for got, it. I ain't, we ain't got time for all that. I'm not here for it. I ain't even gonna bring it up. Go ahead. We just keep you moving. were saying. <laughs> had a friend who was playing for. Uh, <clears throat> it was another Instagram, uh, Facebook, you know, online person friend, and playing for a. Uh, a well-known artist and but that artist had some things going on where they decided I'm going to take a break from touring. Yep. Not because nothing bad is going on, but it was like, "Hey man, I'm really trying to I got a newborn happening. I'm really trying to have my family thing going right now and that's right. what I'm focused on." Right. So it was good for the artist, but my friend was like, "That was the only gig <laughs> that he had." So right. it was like, "Well, what am I supposed to do?" For, for money. So right. he ended up moving back in with his parents to to save money and whatnot. Yep. And now that he's on another gig, he's a little bit more secure because, yo, I don't have any bills that are crazy high because I'm right. living with my, my parents, which is the same as people living with roommates and stuff like that because right. you don't have to foot the bill all all on your own. And he had to uh, he had to realize that the hard way. Like, yo, once this artist stops working, I stop eating basically right. if I, I don't have anything else in line that's why you say people do things like production skype lessons uh me and eric go to nam and we do in-person lessons uh, right so some I, people have jobs yeah listen i know a, i know a singer who was lead singing for a, a 90s r&b group touring all over the country all the time making good money on a tour but he kept a job 
uh when he came whenever he would like he they would they did spot day so they didn't like tour like for three or four months at a time but it would be like friday saturday sunday they got shows in different cities thursday friday saturday the next week they got shows in different cities uh but he kept a job and at the end of the day i, I was wondering like bro but you're making he's making decent money he had been doing this gig for years but he, when he came home during the week he worked well, that's the that's to keep that cushion just in case right. things go south. Right. And so other people maybe not have a job, but they'll, you know, what we all do, play in church. You know what I mean? Uh, pick up a cover band gig, stuff like yep. that. All that stuff works until you – and now let's say you don't move and you want to make money. Uh, that's a good way to make money too. Find you a local church gig. Find you a local cover band. And you could do that until you have the finances or until you have that call where they require you to move and start doing those rehearsals like you say your friend right. did. And Listen, this is what you do in the meantime, between time, if you don't want to work a job and you want to be a full-time musician. Right. And see, but this is the thing. We also talked about um, earlier today in the video, we talked about how there's only a certain amount of spots. Because there, it may be some drummer's dream. Like, I just, I really want to play for an artist. I really want to tour and play f- behind an artist. That's what I want to do. And there's no artists in their area. They've been to auditions left and right. And they haven't um, been able to land any kind of gig that they want. You can it, get with an artist that you feel has potential and is starting out. Oh, that's a real grind, though. It is a real grind. That's that's, but, that's but, more but, of a grind than it is. But listen, when you build something that's yours, ah, sha ba ba. I felt <laughs> an unctioning <laughs> of the Holy Ghost. <laughs> <laughs> Holy Ghost. <laughs> when you build some, when you build something that's yours, there's a shift in the atmosphere from, from the from the ground up. Ah. It may be harder, but no one can take that from you. Call it what it is. It, it actually be your. There, remember when we played? We played a gig. Uh, with Soul Development in Oakland. We were opening in the new parish for uh, what was the name of the artist? Odyssey. Odyssey. Now I had to think about that. There, so. his whole band flew in with them. This was what their eighty second show that year. Jeez, uh, they was they work and they were and we were opening with Soul Development. Mino Yancy, our band, was performing, and we talked to their band, and we were like, man, you know, we. You know, greeting them, getting to know them, uh, talking after sound check. You know, they, you sound good. You know, they use all of the preliminary talks that musicians do. But when we begin to get deeper in the conversation. They begin to tell us how, oh yeah, this band, we've been rocking together for the last five years, and we're just like now getting where we're trying to get to. And we've been grinding like this for the last five. He said, me, I've actually been with him for seven years, like when he first, first, first started. And I said, so wait. If you guys are doing these many shows a year, how are you guys? Who's producing the album? Says, oh, it's all it's all us. It's in house. We record while we're on the road, or we'll, if we're back at home, we make the albums. We do everything, and so they have built something, and nobody's gonna put him off that gig because he and he, he's produced the music. He's been with him from the beginning, so that loyalty they have as a as a family is a, is a thing and they're getting booked everywhere and they said like, yeah after we leave here we got like two weeks off and then we're back over to europe and we're going to be i'm like oh so they've been grinding like this from the beginning but they built it from the ground up they found someone that, that was talented that they believed in and you and of course all of it is a risk there's no there's nothing that's for sure the only thing that can no guarantee doc all you could do is put in the effort, put in the work, and let the results land where they where they may. You just do the the most that you can do, all that you can do, and uh, the results are in the air, really. Well, that's pretty much it for me. That's <laughs> that. I, Listen, I, I, don't, I, I really don't feel like we should end it on that note. I it think we should end like, it there because it, it's <laughs> so it's so discouraging. It's just like, yeah, let's just end it there. Look, quit. Just quit. Don't play music. This is terrible. <laughs> no. No. Uh, no. I mean, we, we even know because we have our own band. We start our own band a but it's, year it's or so. A, it's a it's grind. A, it's a grind. It's, but here's the thing. I would say, like, I would I would piggyback on what you're saying. When you build it up from the ground up and it's, it's a part of you, it's like your child, it is a grind. But, but you love it. You love every part of it. And it's like, yo, I, it's a grind, but I'm excited for the grind. It ain't even work. That's how, that right there is how you should test on whether or not you should want to move or do anything that you're trying to really go for understand that it's a grind and and you have to know that if you're going to love the grind of it to get there because the climb is is the the journey of it is going to be the majority once you get to where you're going to you're going to appreciate it a whole lot more because of the, the grind because of the journey but you have to actually love enduring the hard part and if you don't you're going to give up period because it is hard 
Period. You are going to give up if you don't love it. That is that is the bottom line. You have to you, you, you have to love want it. it really. And if you do, if you're like, yeah, no, I'm willing to sleep on couches and sometimes the car and sometimes I'll sleep in a rehearsal studio that we're rehearsing in and take showers at the gym and uh, eat off the dollar menu every day. Listen, like, like we slept on a concrete floor. Oh my goodness! At the concrete bath and beyond. Listen, that's what we call it. That, that's the place we slept on the with concrete abs- floor. with like no sleeping bag, no blankets, like just no pillow, no the, nothing, like all of it. So I mean, at the end of the day, like I said, you just gotta, you gotta, if you love it, if you can look at the worst of the worst situations and smile about the situation, that's how you know. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm in. That's it. If you don't love it, quit. No, don't quit. <laughs> oh my god, <laughs> and don't quit. Say quit. Nah, if you don't if you don't let it grind, don't make the move. Don't don't go out there and struggle because it is it's and patience, it's heartbreaking. Man. Patience. It's also another attribute you got to have. Well, you... and and in the book that I was uh, when I was coming up in church, it wasn't patience. It was called long suffering. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it was called. In our version, I grew up Baptist, so he said it wasn't called patience. It was called patience. It was called long <laughs> suffering. suffering. You're going to suffer for a very long time <laughs> before you see the light. Listen, you just got to keep grinding. Real talk. That's it. But we ain't going to... Uh, we ain't going to hold you, bro. We ain't going to hold you, bro. We ain't going to talk your ear off. Listen, we got to have one of the homies, because we, we got some musician homies that play. Oh, uh, have them pop come artists, in. Have them come in and, and, and actually talk about, the, talk about it. Because we were talking about talk. it at NAMM a lot. Talk that talk. That real talk. Yeah. So, yeah, that's that's pretty much it. Uh, if, feel, if you feel the need to comment, go ahead. Leave us some comments in the comment section. If you have an idea of what you want us to talk about next, I mean, of course, we have our own ideas, but if you have anything you want us to talk about, mention it in up. the comment section. And also, we I, we didn't put this in the beginning. We should have um, follow our band, Mino Yancey, M-I-N-O-Y-A-N-C-I on Instagram. Listen, oh, yeah. there's links below in all of the descriptions follow of everywhere. Band. Yeah, follow follow our struggle. Follow our grind. Listen. <laughs> it's, it's a grind. You see, you see the look on my face? <laughs> Listen, Yo, it's a grind, y'all. It's a, it's a man. Listen, it ain't for everybody. So yeah, we, we yeah, and on our in our band stuff, you'll see if you follow our YouTube page and all that, you'll see little recaps and rehearsals and things like that. We're gonna be posting. So anyway, we're That's gonna let it. y'all go. All right, good people. We up out of here. Until next time. Peace. Peace. I need you to chill all the way out. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I need you to do. I need you to chill all the way out, bro. It's daylight saving, man. I'm delirious. Daylight savings. Listen.